Hey folks, Tim Miller here with Lionheart, and even churches these days are not immune to violence. As a matter of fact, violence is increasing at a record rate over the last several years on the premises of churches. Some events even happen in the middle of service. We watched what happened recently with Lakewood, and this happened over the last weekend, and I want to talk to you about this. Pennsylvania Church, the pastor saying the gunman smiled at him before bringing the service to a stop with what happened next. This morning, the dramatic video from a church's live stream showing the moment Pastor Glenn Germany looked down the barrel of a gun. And God had chosen. Jesus! Jesus! He says he's grateful to God to be alive. He actually pulled the gun, and that's why I seen the gun. And at that point, I didn't have no time to think. It was just reaction, you know, duck and try to get out of the way of his line of fire. A gunman the pastor says he had never seen before, interrupting Sunday sermon in North Braddock outside Pittsburgh. Pastor Germany says the man had come in and out of the church several times before making eye contact with him, standing up and pointing that gun at him. He pulled the trigger. He pulled the trigger and the gun did not fire. Now, let me be clear right from the start. There was a supernatural event here because that gun should have gone boom and it didn't. And I, I think the protection of God was upon him, no question about it. But it also leads us to the next question, and that's what do wise people do to prepare for the violence that's already here and especially in houses of worship? Now, I got to tell you, I have done some research and it looks like about 90 percent of the churches in the U.S. are under 100. That means that that small church that you just witnessed likely has under 100 folks. You saw the size of the sanctuary, so they don't need security, right? Oh, contraire. They need security as much, if not more, than some of the mega churches. Now, let me just do a comparison here. First off, for those of you who don't know my story, when I retired as an agent after having been a Marine, a police officer, Secret Service, and then I retired as an agent, I became the director of security for a huge church in South Florida, and huge is huge. And I learned a lot of things about church security that were very different than anything that I'd ever experienced because it's a different culture. It's a different climate. You're dealing with hurting people, churches or hospitals. Pastor, pastors and leaders want broken people to come, but they also want people to be safe. And here's the point to what we just saw. Obviously, a miracle happened and that pastor was not shot and killed in front of his uh, congregation. But folks, I just want to remind you that all over the world, good pastors are slaughtered. Because I do get a lot of communications from churches, do a lot of assessments, do some training for teams. And I hear one of two mindsets. And one mindset is, hey, we believe that what we're told in Scripture regarding Things getting more violent in the last days is going to happen, and we're going to be wise and prepared. The other one says, oh, we're not doing anything. God will protect us. And I got to tell you that <laughs> one of those strategies, I think, is very problematic. And, and let, let me be clear. I am not saying that God cannot protect your congregation. If you're a person of faith, there is no question that just like in this case, God can protect your congregation. But it in no way means that you shouldn't be taking proactive steps to make sure that the people that attend your church every week, the kids, the, the, the adults in the sanctuary, everybody is safe. And that happens, folks, when you have a real security program. Now, I do want to look, as I always do with this incident, through the before, during, and after but I want to ask you a question if you're a person of faith and you go to church. Does your church have an active security ministry? Meaning that there are people that have thought through stuff. I don't care what size you are. I don't care if you're a mega church. I don't care if you're a small church. Is it possible that you could have things like fire 
or a weather emergency or even, you know, God forbid, a, a domestic situation or mentally ill person or, or, or. Now, if that is possible, then you should have a wisely prepared plan that is understood by the staff, the leadership, e even if it's a small church, maybe you even take a little bit after service and you kind of talk about, hey, guys, this is what we would do if there was a tornado, if you're in a high prone tornado area, or if there was a fire or, or, or prior planning, wise preparation can save the day, folks, because that means when split seconds matter, people know what to do. I'm not criticizing this church, but they had no clue what to do. Well, how do we know that? Well, let's watch this one more time carefully, and then I'll stop and comment along the way. Church. The pastor saying the gunman smiled at him before bringing the service to a stop with what happened next. So the gunman smiled at him. Folks, you know, one of the things that, you know, you learn in law enforcement and especially in the Secret Service is what we call pre-attack indicators. Body language that doesn't match up with normal behavior. Now, this guy in this case, I believe, has a mental health issue. But here's what we know. We don't know. When that guy shows up, he is coming with an intent to harm somebody. And we'll go a little bit farther and I'll stop. This morning, the dramatic video from a church's live stream showing the moment Pastor Glenn Germany looked down the barrel of a gun. A guy I chose. Jesus. Jesus. He says he's grateful to God to be alive. He actually pulled the gun and that's when I seen the gun. And at that point, I didn't have no time to think. It was just reaction, you know, duck and try to get out of the way of his line of fire. Folks, you hear this all the time with me, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest that <laughs> the difference between reactive security and proactive security is right here on this. I didn't have any time. All I knew was to duck and, and to run. Well. Folks, that's what security preparation, planning, and training does. It makes sure that your pastors are not faced with that circumstance, that situation. Well, why does this matter so much? Well, there are several things that beforehand could have been in place which, you know, may have stopped it. And so let, let me continue, and then we'll come back and circle around. The pastor around. says he had never seen before interrupting Sunday sermon in North Braddock outside Pittsburgh. Pastor Germany says the man had come in and out of the church several times before making eye contact with him, standing up and pointing that gun. So, folks, here, here's something really huge. And, and, and I hope and pray that we all get this and that we go back and talk to our leadership. So let's look at the facts. The guy had come in and out several times, meaning he didn't appear out of nowhere. He came into the parking lot, into the lobby, into the sanctuary, was clearly behaving abnormally, going in and out. And then he looks at the pastor, smiles, stands up, points a gun, and tries to kill the pastor. So there's a lot of problems here that, and quite frankly, I, I deal with a lot of churches that tell me, oh, it's okay, we have concealed carriers. Oh, it's okay, we have police in the lobby. Oh, it's okay, we have folks at the back. Now, I want you to think about when split seconds matter, how they could have dealt with this situation beforehand. Number one, Having someone that is observing, let, let, let's just pause there. In the parking lot, this guy came walking towards the church, small church. They know everybody. They don't know him. And I'll guarantee you that his body language, based on what we see in the sanctuary, was communicating danger or at least abnormal. Now, Again, was he mentally ill? Was he under the influence of drugs? Was he, was he, was he, was he? You know, there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on. So was he 
demonstrating warning factors. Remember, security is proactive. We want to make it not happen. We're not standing around with coffee waiting for it to happen because, quite frankly, in this case, it was purely reactive. And had the gun not misfired, this would have been a very different scenario. So he's outside walking towards us. Opportunity one. If we have somebody there, just observing, going up, greeting him, making eye contact, doing that initial friendly, you know, assessment. Hey, how you doing today? Welcome. Is this your first time? Well, if he's acting bizarrely, then, then it's time as part of your plan to have someone else come out. Now you're talking to him outside where you can make a difference as to whether or not he comes in. And God forbid, if he pulls that gun, you have the opportunity to deal with it outside where no one else is likely to get hurt. Now, if he has a weapon and you have nobody that has a weapon, that's a problem. Maybe you have time to come in, shut the door, call 911, all those things. But guess what? All of that is spelled out in your plan, your emergency operations plan, which highlights, hey, we've got people in the parking lot. Maybe we have cameras in the parking lot. We're trying to interdict this threat before it ever comes in. But then you have folks in the lobby. So when he comes into the church, and many churches operate the same way they have for the last 80 years. I've dealt with churches, and that's their attitude. It's worked for the last 80 years. But here's here's the problem with that. When you read scripture and you see how things are changing so quickly, and the Bible warns about increasing levels of violence, we should be the ones that believe that and begin to wisely prepare. And you know, there are all kinds of parallels I love to use. You look at the book of Nehemiah with evil right outside of the gate. You look what Nehemiah did said he prayed to his God and posted a guard. They didn't just post a guard. They trained those folks. Those folks had skill. And so beforehand, if we had a plan, if we had the ability to talk to him, interdict him, okay, now we're stopping it. Let's move to the during the incident. And again, during the incident, kind of too late. You're not going to stop it. You don't have anybody, apparently, that is prepared to deal with this because there's nobody up front near the pastor that can step in front of the pastor and deal with this threat. And folks, this takes me to a really important thing. I, I am I, I grow frustrated sometimes with churches that believe, honestly believe, flashback to the 1960s, oh, we have a cop standing in the lobby, therefore nobody's going to try to hurt us. Folks, I, I just want to be clear, more police officers are killed by mentally ill people than they are by criminals. Um, now, how that plays in, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of, you know, thoughts on that. But here's the reality. If you think that in today's world where police are being demonized and labeled as, you know, evil, you know, Gestapo, Nazi, and now you get somebody that's already struggling with mental illness, he's going to have anger towards that police officer anyway. So that may not only cause him to do something, it's definitely not going to stop him from doing something. But then you move up one more on the, on the, on the threat scale, and now you're a terrorist. And we know terrorists will absolutely not hesitate to take out a police officer in the execution of their evil that they're, you know, committing against. And by the way, churches are prime targets for this. So during what can you do? Well, if you had somebody up front, if you had a trained person um, that is prepared to take action, because if that gun had been, had a gone boom, not only likely would the pastor have been killed, but if he pivoted towards the congregation, like we've seen in, you know, um, white settlement shooting. I mean, we go down the list. Now you got a massacre. And the problem is, is without a plan, without folks that are trained, it doesn't tend to go well. Thank God for a heroic deacon. I do want you to think, because I'm asked all the time, why, Tim, do you post up front? Well, I just simply because in the Secret Service, when you're up front, 
you're close enough to make a difference when quarter seconds matter. If you're running from the back or the lobby, good luck with that. You're just going to come in time, hopefully, to arrest that person or, you know, a lot of other options. But so that's where during the event, in this case, having somebody up front, maybe they could have grabbed the gun, um, clearly having folks prepared to interdict between the pastor and the pure evil that walked into the sanctuary. And then what about after? Okay, so now you're a small church, you watch this video, and this church, I'm sure, is going through this. Uh, God was faithful, he protected you, but now you need to think as well, we're praying for that protection, but we're preparing as wise people to protect the congregation, because um, this played out in the sanctuary. Could it have played out in children's ministry? So let me ask you, if folks watching your kids, um, do they know, for, for the folks watching your kids, do they know what to do if there's a problem there? Have you, do you have a plan? Do you have you train them? Do you have communication? Do you have all the things that are so critical to preventing this kind of thing and mitigating um, you know, the, the impact if God forbid it does happen. So as you think through kind of what we talked about, let's go over it again. Beforehand, we have maybe video coverage in the, in the parking lot. We have people that are observing the parking lot. We have people that are trained to go talk to these people. God bless that deacon. That's all I got to say. He, he made a decision. I'm not going to let my pastor, you know, be murdered here in front of me. And fortunately, he came down very quickly. He was able, let's talk about that, he was able to pin the guy's hands, but with a gun in his hand, can he still hurt and kill people? Absolutely, he can. Now, I, I don't know what this guy's deal is. What I do know is that he was filled with either drugs or mental illness or, or even rage, but here's the reality. He was a very, very serious threat to the church. And so the before, during, and after, we're going to prepare before, we're going to have an emergency plan, we're going to do some basic training, we're going to make sure everybody understands what to do, especially the staff and key leaders. The during is we're going to always try to put people, and folks, I, I get it, I, I hear all the time, we don't have a lot of trained people, that's okay, you can train people. You know, when, when we had multiple, multiple campuses, I was amazed at how many really good people that were motivated to learn, not just for the church, but their own personal safety and protection, step forward. And that's where you got to provide some kind of training for them. You know, sometimes the police department will come down, talk to them about situational awareness and body language and some basic things. It's always a good idea to have the fire department walk through your facility and kind of outline, hey, you know, these are some important areas to know, especially regarding tornado, you know, bad weather. Um, uh, fire, uh, all, all those areas. And then you think about periodically just kind of asking the question with your team, you get there early, what would I do if, what would we do if? Because these kinds of things are happening more and more and we need to be prepared. And then, you know, folks, I can't stress enough the importance of not looking through the lens of fear at any of this stuff. But really being focused, I mean, laser focused on being wise and observant wherever you are, out and about, and even at church. Because again, if you notice a suspicious person sitting in a vehicle, it doesn't look right, you're getting that feeling, that could very well be the alarm bell <clears throat> that enables you to do something about it before it ever happens. And so I hope and pray this is helpful to you. Um, I hope and pray this never happens at your churches. Um, but let me just say this. I would rather be way prepared and not need it than be unprepared and need it to save my life and others. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I wanted to get this one out because I, I, it's just amazing to me how the tempo of violent incidents is occurring across our country. I'm going to be doing some more on the campus violence stuff coming out. And hey, I just want to say thank you to everybody. You guys have been amazing in terms of encouraging me. I am finding out, though, that a lot of my followers are being unsubscribed. 
Um, big mystery as to why, but if you could do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, share this with everybody that you know that goes to church. Uh, we do that as part of our, our uh, company with Lionheart. We do church assessments. I spent all morning on the phone with churches, um, and we do it through the lens of a whole lot of background um, in terms of site security. Um, so if that's something we can help you with, we'd be honored to do that. And in the meantime, uh, like, share, subscribe. Please be safe out there. I'll see you next time.